everyone. I recently posted about different ways to get more out of large language models, not the least of which is called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. I posted about this in my newsletter, The Why. Uh, I'll pull that up and show it to you. And then I want to walk through a quick demo of getting RAG working on my local machine using simple, easy, and free resources to scrape a website, pull down that website's content, generate embeddings, load those embeddings into a open source uh, vector database, and then use that vector database in order to augment a um, chat GPT powered large language model uh, query. So let's get started. So this was the article that I posted on my newsletter. And uh, first of all, if you'd like to uh, subscribe, I'd really appreciate it, the y.beehive.com. But I talked about different ways to uh, augment your large language model. And the second one, retrieval augmented generation, basically is plug and play context. So if you think about a foundational large language model like ChatGPT, like Claude, like Llama2, they contain a ton of amazing conversational capabilities, but they don't know everything. They technically don't know anything. What we're going to do is we're going to specifically pull down content from a website and load this into a vector database in the form of what are called embeddings, which is easy way, an easy way for large language models to do word and sentence comparisons, phraseology. Trust me, there's a lot more to it, but I want to keep this pretty simple. You can think of it as, in this case, Llama 2, selecting books from the library. It picks what it wants, it learns what it needs, and it moves forward, all right? So in order to do this, we're going to use a couple different uh, technologies. First thing we're going to use is uh, my GitHub. We're going to use Llama Index. So Llama Index is a data framework for LLMs uh, made by a gentleman named Jerry Liu, uh, fantastic library that can basically plug into a number of uh, LLM powered APIs. It can plug into Hugging Face. It can plug into a variety of inputs, resources, vector databases. Absolutely incredible. Um, well worth learning about. Here's the GitHub for it right here. We won't need to go into that, but I just wanted to pull it up. The other thing we're going to be working with is Milvis. So Milvis is an open source vector database. You can use this all you want. You can download the standalone version, which we'll be using for these tests. However, it can also be installed on Kubernetes. There's a marketplace version. And then they have their Zillis Cloud, where you can actually, like Pinecone, run your Milvis vector store in the cloud and use it from anywhere. Now, that can be useful for, in cases like what we're doing, Think of it as a development version. I'm running it on my laptop. But when we're ready to go live, you would want a cloud vector database that your LLMs can plug into for your enterprise services. The other thing we're going to use is called Appify, uh, API Fi, right? So this is a really amazing tool that can be used for a variety of things. But one of its main uh, uses is for scraping websites. So it does include a free website content crawler. That crawler is able to take a number of parameters, take a URL, and it's able to grab those pages in a variety of formats, and then it's able to transform them, follow links, pull everything down. Llama Index is what's going to bring all of this together. It has an Appify connector. It has a Milvis connector. It has an OpenAI connector. It brings it all together and allows us to store vector embeddings in Milvis, and it allows us to use those as an index, as context for our LLM. All right, so we're going to get started. Uh, you saw here I showed my GitHub. Uh, uh, this repo, really super simple. I have a description of what you need to do to get it working. This is what we're going to go through in this video. Basically, what it comes down to is starting up Milvis uh, along with Atu, which is a GUI to be able to view our Milvis uh, vector database. We're going to install the requirements. Uh, we're not going to do the uh, environment. I already have mine set up, but this is how you would do that. That would have your OpenAI and Appify tokens. And then spider.py is going to be run, which actually pulls 
content from the web using Appify, query.py is going to use Gradio and pull up a simple interface for us to use against our LLM. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and get Milvis set up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the Python prerequisites installed, and then we can quickly move forward. So I'm going to open up Terminal. I'm going to CD to the Milvis directory, and I'm going to run uh, sudo docker compose up dash D. You do need to use sudo. This gets me started. Uh, Milvis is starting in the background. If I do a docker ps, I get back. Uh, I can see that Milvis, Atu, and all of its pieces are running. So we're good to go there. I'm going to go back to my main directory. And uh, I'm a pipenv user, so I'm going to use pipenv install so that it creates a virtual environment for me with Python 3.9, as well as all of the prerequisites that I asked for. Uh, it's all in the pip file. Everything should be good to go if you pull down this Git repo. So we'll just give that a moment. Should only take a second. While that's going, let's see if Atu is up yet. Uh, so I'm going to go here. I have a tab open already for localhost port 8000. All right, looks like Atu is up. It tried to go straight to logged in, but we'll go to the sign in page. And then, uh, yeah, so Milvis standalone. I'm going to click connect and let's see if it connects me in. I found sometimes you have to click it a couple times. There we go. All right. And uh, it looks like I am inside of Milvis. I've already got a prior example of me running this up. No problem there. We'll go ahead and do it from scratch next time around. And uh, we're good to go. All right, so Milvis is online. Just to show you around a little bit, we've got our collections here where we can see the different collections we have. Uh, we can perform vector searches right from the web UI. We can see our system view of what we have online and the node configuration, which this is all standalone running on my local machine. So nothing special there. All right. So uh, at this point, what we are going to do, we're going to go back here and everything's good. We're going to open up a shell. So pipm shell, and I should be good to go now uh, to run my examples. All right. So let's take a look at the code real quick. The first thing that we're going to run um, is spider.py. So spider.py is what's actually going to read in our environment variables, which have our API keys. It's going to identify which site we want to crawl. In this case, I'm crawling the Appify uh, uh, documentation. Uh, it's going to set up a connection to the Milvis vector store. And then it basically connects to the Appify actor, which is what is doing the scraping. And then it loads data from that Appify actor website content crawler you can see here. For each item it brings back, it runs that through this transform data set item function you can see right here, which returns a document. Those documents are then going to be taken by Llama index and whatever we want done with them will be done with them. In this case, we set up a storage content which connect context which connects to our Milvis data store. And then we create an index uh, out of those documents using our vector store index. All right. Now we have a little query at the end here to make it simple. But really, it's perform a scrape, load it into uh, Llama index, load it into Milvis, and then use Milvis, Milvis for querying. All right. That's what we're going to do first. Now, in this case, I uh, called it. I already have a web scrape, so I'm going to call this web scrape too. We're still going to go ahead and we're going to query uh, this. Uh, we're going to scrape this web page, and we should be good to go. Uh, one thing you may notice here is I do call out these params. The params are inside of a file, uh, spider settings.json. That is in the, uh, the uh, Git repo as well. And this is just some settings for Appify that work really well to identify next pages, to ignore stuff you don't need like nav, footer, script, et cetera. All right, so I'm going to open this up and we're going to run Python spider.py. This is going to take a little bit. Um, what it's doing, uh, it's going to do is call the Appify script. It's going to um, start pulling down and scraping uh, web pages. And if I bring up that page, you see here, here's the page that it starts with. 
every link here on the left hand side, every link you see, it's going to follow those links and it's going to uh, take that content and bring it back to my machine. All right. And you can even see if I go here to runs, you can see that it's running right now. So far, no results. One thing worth noting is that with a free Appify account, you can get $5 of usage per month. It may not sound like a lot, but this is dirt cheap. In this example here, I pulled down 258 documents that cost 51 cents. All right, so this will take you quite a ways um, while you learn how this works, okay? So uh, that's running. We can see it running here. Once it's done, we should have a loaded Milvis data store. It will be in the uh, Web Scrape 2 uh, collection, and then we'll be able to plug that into a large language model super easily. Um, I would say that we're already past the hard part, but there really, there's not much of a hard part. This isn't too difficult to do. It's how you architect it that matters, all right? All right, that's running. We're gonna go on pause for a moment because this is gonna take a little bit. And then once it's done, we're gonna come back and hook this up for our queries. And it's done. All right, that was great. Okay, so it took two minutes, 34 seconds to scrape that content. I'm gonna go back to my terminal window here. Looks like it finished and it ran our question. If you remember at the end, what is this documentation about? Uh, it ran the question. This documentation is about web scraping for beginners. It covers the basics of crawling, data extraction, blah, 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 blah. All right, so it, we pulled down all of the pages that were crawled from that site, loaded it into Milvis, and then ran our first query against it, which is really cool. All right, so I'm going to go back to Milvis. We're going to refresh this page. I see Web Scrape 2. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go to Data Preview. And in here, you can see the pages that were brought down. So we see the text is stored, but also the embeddings. And the embeddings are the mathematical representation of how this content compares to other content and other, uh, other words, phrases, et cetera, to put it simply. All right, so we've got it, it's in Milvis now, and we're good to go. All right, so let's check out the next piece, which is query.py. Super simple. Again, the only difference is we're using Milvis and Gradio here. And uh, so same thing, environment variables get pulled in, and then we connect to Milvis. We're bringing up a Gradio interface where you enter some text, and it is going to use that text to query our uh, uh, chat GPT, uh, GPT-4 through OpenAI's APIs, but using our Milvis context, okay? So I am going to go back here and we're gonna do Python query.py. And this should, uh, in just a moment, it should bring up a URL for us that we can use locally. Just worth mentioning, Gradio is really cool because not only do you get a private URL, you also get a live URL that's accessible for 72 hours. Really useful if you wanna show this off to friends, family, colleagues, or a venture capitalist, right? So let's go to our Gradio site. We have a nice little sample page for us to run anything we want. What is this documentation about? And submit. Now it's running on my local Mac, so it's not horribly fast, but it gave us about the same answer. It's about web scraping for beginners. It covers the basics, blah, blah, blah. Let's ask it, what is Appify? It's a web scraping and automation platform. It gives me some great context that it pulled from the documentation that I was able to pull back. Is Appify capable of scraping Amazon uh, products. Let's find out. Yes, it is. The provided code and the context information demonstrates how to use Crawly to scrape Amazon products. That's interesting. How do I scrape Amazon products with Appify? There we go. Use the Crawly library. It tells me a little bit more detail. Can Appify, teach me how to play guitar. 
That's a shame. According to the documentation, Appify cannot teach me how to play guitar. So you see here what we ended up doing without fine tuning a large language model, without creating new models or trying to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on big machinery with tons of graphics cards to uh, take a foundational large language model and recreate it. All we did was take content from the web, push that into a vector database with its embeddings, and then we can plug and play it into LLMs. We could have done the same thing thanks to the magic of Llama Index. We could have done the same thing with Llama 2, with Falcon 40B, or the recently released Falcon 180B. The point here is, is it's like a context jukebox. If I had multiple clients, if I had multiple business cases, if I want to keep everything totally private, this is a great option for doing that without having to go to all of the trouble of building your own LLM from scratch. This is Retrieval Augmented Generation, and it only took us a few minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much. I'll be doing more of these soon.